Good afternoon, everyone. Meatflation, stick a shock. High prices here to stay through the summer of 2022. Dairy beef. Top warehouse operators, here's your timeline. U.S. port congestion, end of 2022. We have another whole year of incredible price rises and shortages. Hyperinflation, Jack Dorsey calling that. Magnesium shortages, China just can't produce it, but it's used in everything for alloys. From mobile phones to automobiles, more shortages. Russia putting the thumb screws down. Halting Poland to Germany pipelines. U.S. coal sold out for 2022 already. Last days of October, first days of November. Wheat, Durham shortages, pasta shortages, prices up. Do you think this is organic or do you think it's planned? New studies show that by the time people reach their middle ages, the body often produces less than half of the collagen it did in their youth. Collagen is the main building block in our skin, making up 70 to 80 percent of it. This is why we get sagging skin and wrinkles as we age. If you want to look younger, you must supplement collagen, which will improve your skin's elasticity, make it smoother, more plump, and more youthful looking. That's why Ageless Multi-Collagen provides five key types of collagen you need from four different sources, essential to optimally support an array of full body benefits. No odor, no taste, no clumping, unlike other collagen supplements. And this is why I recommend health with adapt2030.com Ageless Multi-Collagen, a quick way for youthful appearance. Use the link in the description box below for 51% off my favorite Ageless Multicollagen. And now on with the video. And we're going to start here. Big money knows big moves. Twitter CEO hyperinflation, says Jack Dorsey. And we've seen it happen across so many nations in the last hundred years. A dollar would exchange what would have been a year's wages, and that'll buy one egg. What happens when it reverses and the dollar turns into the stacks of money? Meatflation is what they're calling it. And a perfect example, which I think is a bit understated actually, meatflation, boneless chuck roast. This isn't T-bones or filet. Boneless chuck roast, 28% over the year. But if you've been to the supermarket 28% was years ago. Look at doubling prices plus plus. So meet sticker shock. Looming for most. Now they're even giving a timeline on this too, along with container bottlenecks, alleviations, etc. So whoever's around at the end of the summer of 2022 might see a drop in meat prices. So here's the thing. They're trying to give $3,000 signing bonuses to get into meat packing and poultry operations, employers are getting increasingly desperate. They can't find anybody. So where's the bottleneck? Field to your plate. Field to your glass, if you're in the dairy. Because the inputs into the entire system of cattle and dairy are rising. This is from October 29th, and then this will take us through more rising prices expected in the first weeks of November. This is just a trend that we're seeing. Would we see $21 corn? Possibly. Durham wheat, not forthcoming. They're at about 50% of what the globe needs to produce. Noodles, breads, pizza crust, etc. That's going to be hard to find moving forward. But as you can see where these prices up, 40 cents. That, you know, commodities trading, and this is gigantic moves, really gigantic moves. Usually it'll go up like a quarter percent, half percent, something like this. And that's news making, but up 38 cents. Oh my. And at least five, 10% moves is shocking. A lot of people that have been in the industry for 30 years or so, the closest they remember 2008, nine run up, but here we go again. And all things electric in China shutting down, you know, China stopped crushing soybeans for oil for people to cook. That's how little electricity they have. So when you see millions of jobs at risk in Europe, and you could also 
include the United States or any other nation or continent in this, at risk because there will be no magnesium coming out of China. But you need that for the alloys, for so many things, from mobile phones to automobiles, and a myriad list in between there. Something as simple as food processors and things you would use in your own kitchen to prepare food. Again, it all comes down to these alloys. So magnesium shortage, Shanxi flooding up there, as well as the electrical shortages. China is in a basket of problems right now. Food shortages, electrical shortages, currency woes, economic contraction, and the whole shipping thing locking up the planet. Not to mention the internal strife. The collapse of housing prices, in addition to the economy and the manufacturing, it is just a Charlie Foxtrot over there. And speaking of thumbscrews, Russia. Europe's on edge after Russia unexpectedly halts gas shipments. Yeah, those are from Poland to Germany. And we've seen some flowback coming into the Ukraine from Western Europe as well over the last couple weeks. So this is one of many of the pipelines. Yamal, and you can see the terminus points, the stations there moving through Belarus and Poland. See, bypassing Ukraine. Oh, they lost all their transit fees. Millions and millions of dollars. Oh, we got to make an international complaint because we can't get our money. But take a look at Russia's gas flows to Europe out of here. All 10 pipelines, they control the fate this winter of Europe, period. And the whole thing's about the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, number eight there, to be able to also bring gas to Germany. No pipeline approval, no gas to Europe. Wonder who's going to win that one. Speaking of energy supplies shrinking or growing, whichever way you look at it, with coal here in the U.S., forward coal, gone for 2022. Literally, they've sold all that was destined to be produced through the year 2022 is already bought. So these shrinking stockpiles, if they were to move forward in time, would drop significantly further. So the U.S. Energy Information, or the EIA, putting out some other charts here. U.S. power plants are going to burn 20% more coal this year. And they're at max capacity of production So any shortfalls, that's the reason they're saying, oh, your prices are going to go up 40, 50% this year. Forget the Tesla devices running on Earth's magnetic field to spin magnets in an opposite direction to create power. No, no, no. You need to burn coal. We shall have no free energy on this planet. How dare you even talk about using the Earth's magnetic field to power devices to generate electricity? Gas, oil, and coal, no magnetic field allowed. Total U.S. power generation. That's going to increase, and this winter is poised to be extremely cold by almost every agency out there forecasting with the really cool Pacific Ocean water temperatures with the La Nina and the Arctic Oscillation going negative, which is going to push huge Arctic fronts and polar vortices really even down to Africa, way down into Mexico different places further south in Asia. And speaking of Asia, let's talk about container ships and containers themselves sitting idle on West Coast ports, U.S. from Asia, inbound. Marine Exchange putting this one out here, showing you the bottleneck and how much congestion there is. Never seen anything like this. It's almost as if it's man-made, this slowdown of offloading onto the trucks. Strange, that is. But you can see a downtrend in container shipping. They're calling it the eye of the the hurricane, if you will. It seems that prices might be dropping for the next couple of weeks. But as is, if you're in the eye of a storm, that backside wall is even more powerful. I'm going to start ripping things up in a different direction. So 50% of the reports say prices are going to continue to drop. 50% are saying we're in the eye of the storm and they're going to slam northward again so quickly. So here's where we end. The rubber meets the road. Goldman Sachs. You already saw the meatflation. They're expecting that through the end of 2022. Another full year and a few months of massively rising prices. Massive shortages across 
the entire planet, not just the U.S., not just Europe, but the chip supply. So things for automobiles and all these semiconductor chips. The last part of the year here, there should be some alleviation and expansion of production coming in the second half of 2022 into 2023. It's fitting the same timeline as the meatflation. You're going to have to ride it out for another year and a couple months. Improved U.S. labor supply. I don't see that coming in first half 2022. No way. We're playing music on the Titanic with that one. If you're going to believe the U.S. labor supply is going to increase magically in the next six months. And the wind down of U.S. port congestion, second half of 2022. So what is it all showing you? We got another year in stormy seas of reset. The holidays are upon us. So what do you think you'll be able to purchase during this time? Stocking stuffers and gifts by early. Because it just probably is not going to be there on the shelf when you go to get it. Storable foods is one way you're going to want to take action. But also join my Telegram channel, Adapt2030, and right over on BitChute, Adapt2030. All the links for tonight's stories, images, graphs, and information are in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.